All right, so this is the shot I'm gonna be working on for this video. Um, I can quickly show you what I did to it uh, in Lightroom. I'm just gonna reset this. So this was the original image straight out of the camera. Um, as you can see, it's really underexposed, but that was intentional because we had a very high dynamic range scene and I wanted to preserve the highlights up in the sky. So what we did was, oh, actually, just so you know, I was actually shooting this out of my friend's S2000. We had the top down and I had uh, my settings, my camera settings were aperture of 5.0, uh, shutter speed of one, 640. Um, I think I froze the motion a little too much for my liking in this shot. Um, I would, Truth be told, I was kind of scrambling for my camera at this point. So my first priority was getting the exposure that I want. Had I had I been thinking a little bit clear, I probably would have stopped down a little bit more on the lens, maybe to like F8, and cranked up the shutter speed to something like maybe one three hundredth of a second just to get enough motion blur in the shot, which I ended up doing in some later shots, which I also liked, but I really liked just the way the composition came out, and um, this is the shot of my friend's M3, which, uh, from what I've been told, um, ass shots for this car are are preferred. So that's what we went with first. And um, as you can see, we did a lot just in Lightroom without having uh, to even go into Photoshop yet. And as I always say, when um, you're making uh, any type of like really dramatic adjustments to your file It's always best to start in the raw file in Lightroom because that is when you have the most data to play with uh, the most um, How should I say? Pliability uh, the file is a it, it's most armored so it's not gonna break It's not gonna fall apart. You can really push it and these Fuji XT2 files are surprisingly robust in post. Um, so now that we've covered that, you can see here that it is, well, it's a little bit grainy and it's actually surprisingly pretty well focused. And we can, we can take care of some of that grain in Photoshop, but the adjustments I made were uh, as follows. I did a lot of local adjustments here. I brought down this gradient filter and just lowered the exposure on that sky and kind of just erased it from the edges of the car. I did the exact opposite with another gradient exposure. I just slightly brought up the exposure in the car and lowered the saturation of the roads a bit just because they were a little, it was a little bit blue for my taste. Got rid of that. Brought back the saturation in the reds of the uh, taillights here, which you can see here. And I think I might have just brushed the car a little bit. Yeah, I just made a couple of adjustments in the car. As you can see here, I brought up the, um, the exposure, the highlights, brought down the shadows a bit to compensate. But anyway, this is just to sort of prep my file. Um, I always like to start in Photoshop with uh, the most detail possible because after this, uh, the file is not gonna be as pliable. So it's not going to really do me any favors to try to recover any type of detail or correct any type of colors once I'm in Photoshop. So now that we're in there, let's go ahead and figure out what we want to do to this file. I'll just go ahead and make a quick adjustment here. And the first thing I notice is uh, we're just going to name this layer game plan and the first thing I notice is we want to clean up some of uh, these areas want to clean up some of the bit of the road I believe the car can probably use a bit of touching up uh, let's see uh, I don't know what this is this looks to be this could probably go and as you can see we, we did get some motion blur in those wheels which is pretty nice Actually, the car is pretty clean. I don't need to. I'll probably. Well, actually, yeah, I think uh, my friend Eddie's actually quite proud of his tag, so I'll leave that alone. Um, 
So there's really not that much cleanup. Maybe I'll, I'll get rid of this. And the idea here is just to kind of minimize distractions. And there doesn't seem to me too much else. So we'll just go ahead and change colors. And I guess the other thing I really want to do is, is dodge and burn. Uh, especially this is cars. Uh, cars are all about the lines and the contours. So I really want to bring out, add depth to the, to the image. So I think I will do that. Yeah, I'll just dodge and burn the car. And beyond that, it's just a matter of toning and color grading. And that's kind of up to taste and we'll experiment with that a bit. We definitely want to go with something warm um, in this photo. Uh, it is sunset after all. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'll just go ahead and And I think our, our cleanup, our initial cleanup is good enough here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a dodge and burn layer now. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to some of these actions that I have here. And just created a color layer, gonna fill that with 100% black. And as you can see, we got ourselves a, um, a nice black and white overlay to kind of to kind of give us a, a guide about what needs to be adjusted. And actually, I think I'm gonna create a curves layer, set it to multiply, and that'll just give me a better, an even more contrastier sort of helper layer, so to speak, and lower the opacity to like 29%. And we're good, we'll start with our dodge. I'm gonna set a big soft brush to a flow of maybe, maybe 4% will do for now and if we need to adjust we'll go ahead and with dodging and burning you kind of just want to want to accentuate the highs and the lows and we'll start with well actually first thing I'm gonna do and this is actually a cool kind of trick that I use to, uh, to make dodge and burning a little quicker for myself is I'm gonna go ahead and make some mask, some channels mask. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to my channels layer over here. I'm gonna hit command click on the RGB channel and that's gonna create this selection and it's a selection of all the highlights in the image. You go down here to your mask button and as you can see, it's created a mask using just our highlights. And go ahead and uh, command click that mask and you'll see that it brought up the selection again. If you hit Option Command Shift and click on the mask again. You'll see that it creates a more refined, a more narrow highlights mask. So we'll just go ahead and hit our mask button again, and you can see it now. Now only the uh, more extreme highlights are, are selected, and you can keep doing that honestly, that process, until you get some really refined selections. Um, for this image, I probably don't have to go that far, but I was just trying to give you the idea. I'm going to go back. Uh, select uh, my RGB again. This is going to bring up the highlight selection again. So now what you want to do is hit the inverse of that, hit the mask, and now, as you can see, we have a mask of just our shadows. And we can go ahead, Option Command Shift. Oh, sorry, we're going to click on that, Option sh Command Shift. And once again, we've done the same thing. We've narrowed down our selection, made it more refined, but this time it's in the shadows. So now it's only selecting the deepest shadows. And now what I'm gonna do is hit Command A to select everything. And I'm gonna go back to my first uh, highlight layer and I'm gonna hit Option Command and I'm gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna go down to my first shadows layer, which was right here. And you're gonna see this come up, no pixels are more than 50% selected. And essentially what's, what that's saying is, this is a mid-tones mask. So as you can see, if we hit our mask again, 
you have this kind of like washed out gray image and that means that when you have this mask collected, only the midtones of your image are gonna be affected by whatever adjustments you make. And I always like to kind of start my edits with having these masks available to choose from. So now, let's say we wanna dodge and burn and go ahead and select our first highlights layer. Go back to our dodge layer. I'm going to shift delete and fill with white. And as you can see, it significantly brightened up, brightened the, uh, the brightest parts of our image. And what we can do then is group this layer, create an inverted mask, and now we can just easily paint this wherever, wherever we want our highlights accentuated. So definitely on our wheels, right here on the back of the car. And you can see we're only selecting, we're only affecting the highlights of the image and our shadows are being left alone. Definitely want to get that BMW logo. Definitely want to get these lines over here. And down here for sure. And maybe, maybe a little bit of this road. Why not? Add some depth to this road. And we can go ahead and now do the same thing with our shadows. I'm gonna go ahead and for this, maybe, let's see, maybe I don't wanna select all the shadows. Maybe I only wanna darken some of the shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this uh, more refined shadows mask. I'm gonna go back to our RGB. And now I'm gonna fill this with white. And you can see, we just made our darks darker. Do the same thing, put that in a group, inverted mask. I think I'm gonna lower my flow to 2% because I don't wanna really crush the blacks that much. And now we're going ahead and adding this kind of like nice contrasts to the car. And it's creating a lot of depth. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the road, adding some darkness to the shadows here. Maybe along right here. I mean, that's a little too harsh. Go down to like 1% and, and I definitely, right here, maybe add a little bit more dimension. And maybe I'll go back to my highlights and brighten this up a bit more. And back to the darks. And I'm gonna show you really quick what we just did. I'm gonna select both of these layers. I'm gonna group that. I'm gonna rename this Dodge and Burn. And you can see we just added a significant amount of oomph to the car. And the great thing about this is that you can build up this effect if you want a little bit more. Um, so for example, let's say you just wanted to make those highlights pop a little bit more. You can just grab a curves layer Maybe just bring that up a bit and go ahead and delete this mask. And let's see, select these highlights, just hit the mask button. And once again, as before, made it make a group with an inverted mask. And now we can kind of just paint this extra highlight punch wherever we we deem it necessary and if we don't if we've gone too far if we don't like what we've done what we've done excuse me we can lower that effect a bit um, pardon me if I seem a little bit delirious or woozy we were just out shooting all this and uh, we were out in the hot Miami Sun where the heat index is regularly over 110 I don't think I drank enough water to really recover. So I'm a little dehydrated, a little woozy. So don't mind me. We're just going ahead and painting over this effect. And as you can see, it's a very subtle effect. It's not very dramatic, but it adds just enough punch, in my opinion, to, to the car. 
and I really like where this image is going. I'm going to go ahead and delete these two helper layers. And now, um, the sky to me is looking a little bit flat. Uh, that was by design. We prepped it that way in Lightroom. We have as much detail as we, we would need in the sky, but now I think we're going to... We're going to start with our grade, and that's going to kind of affect the whole image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gradient map, and I'm going to select my blend mode to soft light. And as you can see, it adds this cool, sort of like cool color grade to the image. I don't particularly care for this specific one, so we're just going to select one that kind of suits our needs something warm oh i really like this one this is a little sepia blue but might be a little too dramatic it's a little it's a little gotham dark night for my taste uh it might work for some images it might actually work for this one this is sepia blue too uh we'll we'll hold on to that one let's just select that one we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna make the other one invisible and I'm just gonna go back and select a different gradient and see if maybe maybe there's something else in there. Uh, it's a little, I actually like this blue a little bit more, sepia cyan, blue selenium, that's a little too much. This gold one looks really nice. Sepia one has this muted, desaturated look. I'm not sure that's what we're going for either. Sepia three. Sepia 5 adds a little bit more gold to the sky. Uh, sepia highlights. This adds a little a little warmth to the highlights, actually, and I actually kind of like that. I like this. I think I'm going to go with sepia highlights. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and bring up our previous blue cyanish one and I'm going to actually go to this gold blue. Ooh, I like that. Gold blue. Sepia. Huh. All right. We'll stick with that for now. We'll make that invisible. We're going to go ahead and lower the opacity of this layer to maybe 41%, 38%. That's nice, that's a nice starting point. And we're gonna go ahead and activate this layer and we're gonna drop the opacity significantly low. And I don't want it really affecting the car, but I like the effect on the road. So I think what I'm gonna do is, and I don't really, I don't really care for its effect on the sky. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a gradient uh, and kind of just like mask that from the sky a bit. As you can see there, we've just created like a black mask that kind of just deletes that effect from the sky. And like I said, I don't really care for this effect on the car. I don't want the car to, well actually his car does shine a bit blue in certain lights, but I think it, for this case, it's a little too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe set my flow to 5% and I'm gonna just kind of mask it out of the car. really don't want it on those chrome wheels either. Go ahead and just set it to 50%. We don't want any of that lingering around here. All right, that's good. So the effect has gone away from the car and still think it might be a little too heavy. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit more, maybe something like 15%. And I think this, I think this bottom layer is a little too contrasty for my taste. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back to these channels that we created. And this is why they're so helpful. Cause now I can say like, well, you know what? I don't really like how dark it's making uh, the bottom of this car here. So I can go ahead and select my deepest shadows layer. And I can go ahead and select, uh, hit shift delete. Select black and maybe fill it with like, let's say 50% black. And now 
you can see that the mask has gotten rid of that effect in the deepest, darkest parts of the image. And we didn't have to do any kind of complicated selection, any type of uh, painting, any type of, really any type of work. It just kind of did it for you. And you can see that it's a very subtle effect. Actually, I'm gonna just zoom in so you can really see what, what the effect is doing. But it adds just enough recovery so that the effect doesn't crush my blacks too much. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit more. So I'm gonna select that. Maybe I'm gonna select the layer just above it to give me a broader spectrum of the darks. And I'm gonna go and do the same thing. And maybe this time I'll do 30% black. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe let's do another 30%. And that kind of diluted the effect a bit. And you can see, now you can get a clear idea of what it's doing, but it's just kind of bringing back some of that detail and not crushing the blacks too much. And that's a good starting point for, for the grade that I kind of had in mind. As you can see, this is where we started. This is where we're at now. Our dodge and burn layer. Really brought out some of that car. And now I am thinking, Let's see if we can do some color contrast with these curves. Just bring up a curves layer and I think we can stand to warm up this image a bit. We'll just bring up the reds a bit. And right away that, that looks pretty good. Um, we don't want it affecting our shadows too much so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of clip it down here. And now our image is a little, a little too red so what we can do is go to our green channel, we can add some green to those highlights, and kind of uh, get rid of that red, and we can, we don't wanna add too much to the shadow, so we'll clip it there, go to our blue channel and see what, what we got here. Uh, I don't wanna take away too much blue from those highlights. Um, that's something like right there. It's a little too much blue in the shadows. So we'll... And as you can see, this is this has dramatically warmed up our image. And I think kind of balanced the colors a little bit more. I still think there's a little I'm not liking those those darks. All well, these midtones. So I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna add a solid color layer and we'll go ahead and like select, select a very dark blue something like that um, no that's a little too something darker and this might take a while for me to get the exact shade of blue that I like. This might do. And I'm gonna select this blend mode to maybe soft light. Maybe, let's see how what color looks like. Oh, that's too, that's too much. And maybe we can, we can just leave it at normal. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this automatic mask and I'm going to go back to our channels. I'm going to select our our shadows. And I'm going to fill that layer with blue. And I think I'm just going to leave it at soft light. And as you can see, only the shadows are affected. And we're going to go ahead and lower the opacity of that just a bit. And yeah, 40% looks good. And now I'm gonna create a group, put a mask in there. And now I'm just gonna kind of keep it to where I want it. I wanna add it to these, to the edges of the sky. That's a little too heavy handed. I'm gonna set my flow back to like something like 10%. And I'm just gonna gently brush it back in to certain areas of the image.
remember that it's only affecting the mask that's below it, which is just the shadows. So, and this is just kind of adding a nice bit of con a fair bit of contrast to the image. I think I might have overdid it a bit. Yeah, we can lower this. We can lower this by another 20%. And now, I feel like this image needs... Um, hmm. What can this image, what can we do to make this image really pop? I think we might be able to add maybe a lens flare. Let's see how that how that would work. Let's just go ahead and fill a layer with black and go to filter, blur, render, lens flare. See what that looks like. And I like, I don't like that flare. I like this flare. Go ahead and just set that blending mode to screen. And we can kind of move this flare around a bit. I like that. And I wanna I wanna change the color of this flare because it's a little it's a little too blue. So we're just gonna set a hue saturation layer and clip it by option clicking uh, this line between the two layers. And that's just gonna make it affect only the layer below it, in this case the, the flare. And I'm just gonna change the color of that flare to something that fits the scene a bit more. something like that and we're gonna go ahead and group these together clip it to a mask uh, and we're gonna once again paint it in where we want it and I'm gonna go ahead and set my blending mode my opacity to 30% kind of get some of that flare around and I, I'm not liking the color Honestly, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that saturation layer. Maybe I'll go with the curves, and I'm gonna get rid of some of that blue. From the, there we go. That's a little bit better. I don't. That's a little too too far, but I like the direction. And get rid of that from the shadows a bit, and maybe. I think we added a little too much green to it, so yeah, that, that'll work. And maybe we'll go ahead and add just a, a touch of red. Not uh, too much. And I like I like that a lot more. And we can go ahead. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my highlights, my extreme highlights. Right there, and I'm going to kind of brush it out a bit from the sky. I don't want that lens flare to blow out my sky, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what that does. Maybe um, if you want to get rid of these marching at, uh, marching ants, just go ahead and click C Control Command H, and the the selection that we just clicked is still active, but the marching ants are are a little are gone so you you kind of get a better idea of what you're what you're doing and right now I'm just kind of playing with this effect just to get the right balance of realism with uh, preserving my highlights I'm gonna err on the side of a little unrealistic and really won't really don't want anything too blown out in this image and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna select my uh, one of my shadows layers uh, maybe yeah I think that'll work go here get rid of my marching ants and with a flow of 10% I'm going to kind of brush it out a bit of the dark areas of the car leave it on the highlights but yeah that'll work and you know, 
now that I think about it, a little bright area where that sun is wouldn't hurt, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bring some of that brightness back. Oh, let me deselect my selection. And let me just go to my highlights. And just kind of bring some of that back a bit. There we go. And I think I'm going to go back to that solid color layer that I created earlier with the blue color. And I'm going to lower that even more. Yeah, that's better. And now what we're missing is... Huh, I think this looks pretty good. I think what we just need is a little, a little contrast now in certain parts of the image. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. And I'm going to go to Filters, uh, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro. It's free. If you don't have it, just you can download it. Google, Google decided to just give away the give away the software. So definitely take advantage of it. It's really helpful software. I really only use it for one thing and one thing only, and that is this pro contrast effect that kind of just adds this nice bit of contrast to an image, but it only affects the midtones. So you're not really like clipping any highlights or crushing any shadows. And this will just kind of give the image a little extra pop. And it does take a bit to render, so there we go. We'll go ahead and delete the layer, the stamp visible layer that we made before, because that just adds size to our file that we do not need. And as you can see, it does have a dramatic effect. It might be a little too harsh, so let's bring down that opacity to something like yeah, maybe 50%. That works. And let's go ahead and just, it always helps to uh, to go to where you started. This is where we started. This is where we're at. And I think one thing that we can definitely do to kind of bring out more of the car is to just create, uh, create a curves layer, bring down the exposure and um, I like the effect in certain parts of the sky that it's having. So what we can do is just go ahead and create a nice little gradient that kind of smooths that effect out a bit. Actually, that might be a little too, that might be a little too much. Let's just delete that mask. What I really wanted to do is just kind of add like a vignette. So what I'm going to do is add just create a white mask with a brush of, let's say, 40%. Color is black. I'm just going to paint away that effect around my car, around my subject. I'm going to go to 20% and just kind of paint away there. And actually, let's go to 10%. And what we're doing is just gradually erasing the mask as we get to the edges of the image we'll lower our flow because we want more of the effect around there and this is just kind of like a very sloppy but very gradual vignette of the image and as you can see we're kind of it doesn't really do much but it does it does kind of bring some of that attention Actually, we can bring some of it over this set. Just add gradually more of that effect over here. And that looks pretty good. I like that. And maybe one more thing we can do. Let's add another curves layer and just bring down. There we go, add some contrast, make like a, a slight little sloppy S-curve. And oh, 
obviously we don't want that clipping our blacks so let's get rid of it on the actually what we can do is just add it to the midtones mask that we created earlier and now as you can see it's just affecting the midtones of the image but I might want it to affect more a little bit of the highlights so I'm gonna go ahead and select my highlights and with a white brush 10% flow just kinda paint it in a bit here we go and now I'm gonna do the same with the darks um, let's see this looks good but I want to take away the deep darks oh, whoops let's go back and select and now I'm going to paint in some of the darker areas for this contrast layer and let's see what that does Now what we can do is group that layer, add a black mask, and really kind of narrow down the effect. And, huh, I actually kind of had a change of heart about this. So I might, I might just get rid of this adjustment altogether. And this is, this is what toning an image kind of is. It's just a lot of experimentation. It's a lot of, not everything is gonna work. Sometimes you have an idea and you're like, oh shit, what was I thinking? So, you know, don't hold yourself to, to one idea, to one method of doing things. Um, I like where this image is. And I think what we can do actually is just maybe add another solid color layer. Oops. Just bring that up above. Accidentally added it to this group below. And this time let's add like a very warm golden color to the overall image. And set that mode to color. Oh, that's a little too, a little too. Uh, it's a little too orange. Yeah. yeah, okay, I like that. Let's just bring that opacity down to... We're at 12%. And actually, maybe we change this to soft light. And lower the opacity to 15%. And that'll just kind of give us this overall balanced balance color to the image and I think I think it's got that kind of dreamy kind of look that I was looking for so I think our last step really is to to create a stamp visible layer and just add some sharpening and I'm gonna go ahead and get my filter my high-pass filter to set that to 2.4 set my blend mode to hard light and this is going to create a really deep sharpening effect and obviously that's a little too harsh so maybe we we create a mask and we just kind of selectively add the sharpening to where we deem appropriate in this case definitely want to get that bmw logo nice and sharp some of the contours of the car if there's like no detail, there's no need to, to sharpen. So like, I'm not gonna like sharpen around here or anything. It's just gonna add unnecessary noise in this case. And maybe, so now I've like selectively, sh selectively sharpened my image. I'm going to duplicate this layer I'm going to delete this mask. I'm going to change the blend mode to 
soft light and I'm going to change the opacity to maybe something like 35% and that's just going to add an overall sharpening to the entire image. And last thing I'm going to do, although I think what I can do is actually, I don't want it too grainy in the sky. Oops. So I'm going to go ahead and select a gradient and kind of mask this out of the sky a bit. And I think we're good. I think we're done. We took this image from from this to this. And I think what would be really cool if we had if we were to do one last thing would be to maybe would be to maybe add some motion blur. So I'm gonna go to blur, motion blur. And I'm going to set, uh, you know, that's, that's too much. It's definitely too much. This looks good. And obviously, I'm going to add a mask. We don't want that everywhere. I want to take our car, mask that out. And set. And obviously this is too much, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring down that opacity to maybe something like. The, I definitely don't want it in the sky, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Set that brush back to 10% and I'm just kind of gradually, gradually um, painting that away, that effect away from the car and kind of keeping it towards the end of the frame. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. We can even we can lower that opacity just a bit and we can do a better job gradually blending this in. I'm going to set my flow to 5% and I'm just going to kind of bring it a little closer to the car and I'm going to set my flow to 50% just to make sure that I don't get it on the car. Don't I want the car to stay sharp. It's already got enough of the motion blur from the from the original image and I think we're good to go. And now we're going to save our image. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that these channels actually, um, they add a lot of size to your image. So when you're, if, if you're sure you don't need them anymore, I mean, you can always make them again later. Now, um, go ahead and, uh, oops, go ahead and select all of them. And you can just kind of delete them. And that'll shrink the size of your file something a little bit more manageable. Go ahead and hit save. And we're done. I might make a few more adjustments in Lightroom. Usually in Lightroom, I like to to walk away for about, uh, I walk away for like five minutes from the image. I come back to Lightroom and I kind of see where it's at and kind of uh, make a few final touches. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, I'm back, we're back. And I'm looking at the image now, and first thing I immediately notice is that I feel like my my blues are a little bit too green, so I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe adjust that hue just a bit. Uh, yeah, maybe 
bring down bring down those yellows a bit make them a little more just take some of that green out of the image and let's see I'm gonna brighten up my white point just adjust my black point and maybe what I'll do is I'll get an adjustment brush I'll bump the clarity just a bit and let's bring that clarity up okay that's better so now we just want to bump up the clarity just a bit maybe to like something like 10 percent and maybe I'll add another gradient to make it a gradual there we go make this gradual darkening and I'll go ahead and take some of the yellows out add some blue to that and maybe bring back some of those yellows add some blues and maybe just overall yellow here just to keep the warm palette consistent and I think we're good to go. I think this is our final image. We started with this. We took it here in Lightroom and we finished it off with this final shot in Photoshop. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, please feel free to drop a line below. If you like what you saw, I would love it if you subscribed. Till then, I will see you next time.